Welcome back to the comic book ASM artist. Today we're doing another video that has been requested by a few people. We're looking at the uh, Marvel Encyclopedia. This version I got uh, a couple years ago for Christmas here. So, it's a rather large book. It's kind of hard to photograph because it's so huge. So... I will uh, be flipping through it and just kind of, maybe when I see something really interesting, get it closer to the camera for you all, but uh, it's, um, I think you can get this for around $40, and it covers a lot of obscure things in the Marvel Universe, so pretty much anything and everything is in this book. The main thing I like, of course, is the uh, good mixture of artwork you can find in it. And uh, this book is done alphabetically. And you just get little factoids. It shows, like, first appearances and abilities and powers and stuff. These first two are pretty well-known guys here. But then you get obscure people too. Adversary, I'm not sure too many people are aware of him. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a mixture here. And then it looks like they do cover some events too, even the more recent ones. I did used to have the uh, Age of Ultron miniseries, but uh, someone borrowed it and they got in a fight with their roommate and they did something to all the books. So that would be nice. Another event here, Annihilation. Uh, I never got to read this event, but I really thought the covers were pretty cool. A lot of them were done by Gabriel Del Otto, if I remember. A lot of people don't know there's multiple Ant-Mans, so that's kind of interesting. Anti-Venom. Let's see. So, Anti-Venom has superhuman speed, strength, and agility. He can stick to and climb surfaces and can fire webbing. He can also cure the irradiated. So, if I remember... Anti-Venom came about because the person who had him, uh, yeah, Eddie Brock, I guess, was Anti-Venom. I forgot that bit, but uh, he had uh, cancer, and this was uh, the symbiote's reaction to it, I believe, was trying to cure him. Because, you know, if he dies, the symbiote dies with him, so pretty interesting. What do we have? Apocalypse here. And he, it says, he can alter the atomic structure of his body to change shape, can increase his size to absorbing additional mass, possesses superhuman strength, stamina, and durability. And he's been around forever. Born nearly 5,000 years ago in ancient Egypt. So... He's been around. He has a really interesting look. One of the more iconic. 
like X-Men designs for sure. Cavalry races to see the Atlanteans, not just Namor. The Avengers, let's see what it says about them. Um, let's look at oh, here, issue number one. Written by Stan Lee, penciled by Jack Curry, and inked by Dick Ayers, the first issue of the Avengers guest starred Rick Jones, the Teen Brigade, and the Fantastic Four. Well, I guess Rick Jones got around because he was instrumental in the um, origin of the Hulk as well. We have the Avengers here. This would be the new Avengers, though, so. This is like the late 2000s Avengers lineup with uh, Bucky Cap there. West Coast Avengers. Now, I had a few of these as a kid, but I didn't really know the, um, the difference between them. So, most of the West Coast Avengers had served on the East Coast and returned to New York after this branch office closed. Let's see. While chairman of the Avengers, the Vision decided to expand the team and send Hawkeye and his new wife, Mockingbird, to Los Angeles establish a second headquarters on the west coast so I guess that is how it started yeah it's kind of an, an offshoot here we don't see like Thor on this team or anything although Iron Man is in that picture I don't know if he was um, part of the roster typically don't know uh, it says he's a founder, so I guess he was. I don't remember him being on the West Coast, though. Now, this was when they did the relaunch after the Onslaught stuff in the mid-90s. So you had um, Rob Liefeld drawing there. So this is a female Bucky called Ricky Barnes. Ricky is a trained dancer and acrobat who studied combat under Captain America. As Nomad, she carries discs that function as flashbang grenades. So yeah, I remember she came back under the current uh, Marvel Universe. I want to say in the, the late 2000s. Because I remember seeing her in a couple things. Let's see. I don't see the recent part there. Could be wrong. But I do recall something seeing here recently. Baron Zemo. And there's a few uh, generations of Zemo too. What's funny is Batroc's name I always mispronounced for most of the month, most of my childhood. Uh, thanks to the uh, Anastasia movie, the character of the talking bat Bartok. So anytime I saw this here, I read it as Bartok instead of Batroc. So I always thought he was a fun character, though. And then they made it more serious in the opening of the uh, Winter Soldiers movie. 
better raid bill. I've not really known much about him. I'm not steeped in uh, Thor background. Uh, let's see. Bill has the same powers as Thor himself. He has superhuman strength and is immune to all disease and injury. His Asgardian metabolism gives him far greater endurance at all physical activities than humans. So, Better Ray Bill was a guardian warrior of an extraterrestrial race whose galaxy was destroyed by the ancient demon Surtur, who was created when scientists were transferred his life force into a bioengineered carnivorous beast with increased strength, speed, and agility. I always just thought he was a strange looking character. It's like he was part horse or something. Oh, I was talking about Ariel Olivetti. See, this is more of the style that I'm used to because he did that recent Thanos um, miniseries. But uh, the interiors weren't done like this. But in the past when he had done books, they were like this, where they were fully painted or whatever his technique is. So if you ever find his old stuff, check it out because that's what it looks like. We have the two Black Widows here. This one is from the um, the Marvel Max line, which was uh, for mature audiences. And what's interesting about the Marvel Max line is supposedly they didn't overprint any of them. Basically, because the books were mature, they couldn't have them on the newsstand, so they had to be like pre-ordered and all that good stuff so that miners couldn't get their hands on it was their thinking I believe but you know I've always seen some of the resale market and stuff so Captain Britain too much. Let's see here. Chosen as the champion of Great Britain by M Merlin and his daughter Roma, Brian Badrock became Captain Britain. Both alone and as a member of Excalibur, he strove to be worthy of his new role. Uh, let's see. Where is... Does he have any abilities or anything? Okay. Captain Britain's uniform gave him superhuman strength and durability, enabled flight, and provided a protective force field. His powers have now been internalized, and the level of his powers is based on his level of confidence instead. And old Captain America here. Let's see. I guess I'll go over uh, standard stuff with him because everyone knows him pretty well. So he's actually six foot two, two hundred and forty pounds. Uh, I don't see his birthday on here, but I know he was born on the fourth of July, I believe. Powers a super soldier serum brought Rogers to the peak of physical perfection. Able to lift twice his own body weight, expert military strategist, Olympic level martial artist, and gymnast, resistant to disease and fatigue. I know they've done a couple um, moderations with his abilities over the years. I know there was a period where his uh, serum basically 
kind of over peaked and made him where he had like super strength almost. He was like ripping doors off of cars and stuff and even more than that because I guess he's even done that in the movies. So, But that was around the 80s if I remember correctly. And then I read a book once where basically he said he could run a mile a minute if he needed to. And then they even um, talked about his um, his reflexes as being heightened as well. So he like dodged bullets before, which was pretty ridiculous. familiar with uh, the Chaos War. I don't know if this was its own uh, mini-series here or not. Looks like it was in the Thor comics. It talks about Greek demigod Hercules has been presumed dead, but the moment Amadeus Cho brought him back and made him all father, he knew immediately of that Amatsu Mikoboshi Chaos King was about to launch his attempt to destroy all creation. I really like uh, this art style here. Not, I'm trying to remember who does this art. I believe he typically si signs it with a Brando. So, I don't know. Civil War here was a great mega event. I would say that was probably the most successful uh, recent event story that uh, Marvel did. But the success of that one is what spurred them to keep it going with other crossover events throughout the years. I stopped enjoying them right after the Avengers vs. X-Men one. Original Sin was the one that I didn't care for. Daredevil here. Dark Rain. This was another event. Kind of event. I think it was... Well, I guess it was its own book and stuff was about the uh, reformed villains being heroes, which was the siege event. Or maybe they kind of overlapped. Let's see. So at the end of Secret Invasion, Norman Osborn personally killed the Squirrel Queen while leading the Thunderbolts, which he'd been put in charge of during Civil War, he used the frame to get himself appointed head of national security in the U.S. He immediately dismantled S.H.I.E.L.D. and put himself in charge of a new agency called Hammer. So I know that Norman Osborn is in that suit. I'm trying to remember everyone else. Well, it says here... So Iron Patriot, Green Goblin, Miss Marvel, Moonstone, Captain Marvel, Marvel Boy, Ares, Hawkeye was Bullseye, Spider-Man, Matt Gargan as Venom, and not pictured, Dakin as Wolverine. So yeah, all these um, villains were assuming the role in the public eye as being heroes. Now, I do remember Deathlock personally from whenever um, he was in the Captain America books that uh, Mike Zeke was doing in the 80s. I'm not sure. Mike Zeke may have actually been um, the person who created or helped create Deathlock. But uh, he's pretty interesting. He's like a futuristic character. So, let's see. 
Luther Manning was born in an alternate timeline in which a multinational corporation had used Operation Purge to rid the Earth of all superheroes. A colonel on that world's U.S. Army, Manning was wounded in battle and later transformed into the cyborg Deathlock. I'm trying to remember how Cap came across him, though. By the way, when I'm reading this, I have to read it through the um, image taken on the camera here without uh, glasses on my face because I can't, um, when it's this close up, I can't read it with my glasses on, so it's my two-edged sword. It's either I try to read it off side of the camera with my glasses on or read it with my glasses off, so... Oh, it's like Dr. Octopus. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Mitch Breitweiser was the one who gave Drax his updated look with his new scarring and everything like that. I read that somewhere. I'm not sure where, though. Yeah, see, we get weary characters like Egghead. Four. So th these costumes here, this was from when uh, Hickman uh, was writing the Fantastic Four with uh, Steve Epting doing the art. And I actually haven't read that story. It's when the um, Fantastic Four dies, I believe. Or uh, not, wow. Whenever the Human Torch dies. And then they bring in Spider Man called the Future Foundation at that time. Yeah. After the Human Torch sacrificed himself, his friends and family threw themselves into the Future Foundation's work. So the white suits are the Future Foundation suits. Fear itself, that was a pretty good event. A big, uh, big impact on the Captain America readers at the time. I'm trying to remember, I know Sin had herself, this is Red Skull's daughter, she got changed to where she had a Red Skull face. And then if I remember in the storyline, Bucky Cap got his arm cut off again, the cybernetic one, and she may have even crushed him with this hammer or, or she got like giant if I remember or something and it may have stepped on him and he was out of commission for a while and then I remember they had um, Colossus suddenly got merged with the magic that um, Juggernaut uses so there was kind of like a weird Colossus fusion with Juggernaut yeah right there Juggernaut as Kerr Breaker of Stone Stone. Although that has him as a different villain, I guess, but I think if I remember at the end of it, Colossus somehow gets the abilities. So I don't remember this part, so it looks like some of these guys, um, they got possessed, looks like, by destroyers from mythology here thing as anger breaker of souls the tuma as nurkod breaker of oceans be the juggernaut titana as skim 
breaker of men, observing manners, Gerthroth, breaker of wills, Hulk as null, breaker of worlds, Grey Gargoyle as mock, breaker of faith. So, I don't remember everything about it. The main thing I remembered is sin being defaced in cap having something horrible happen to them and here's the 50 state initiative this is right after the um the civil war fallout basically superhumans were supposed to register under the government which is what the initiative was and then of course in the uh, they kind of co-opted it a bit and used the Avengers initiative whenever they were talking in the MCU movies with Nick Fury. I believe it's a Greg Horn Emma Frost there. Gamora used to look like there. Changed her look quite a bit for the um, movies. The Clayton Crane Ghost Rider. I believe this was from the uh, X Force series. Jason Aaron started writing Thor God of Thunder maybe the first 13 or so issues this was a really interesting story and the art was uh, consistently well done by Saba Ribic and this is Gore the God Butcher really really interesting story highly recommend it Green Goblin I am always surprised with how much life Green Goblin has um, put into the Spider-Man narrative. The whole death of Gwen Stacy thing. And I guess right after that, I didn't realize that he had been stabbed through on his glider like they had uh, shown in the uh, Spider-Man Sam Remy movies. I thought they did that just for the movie. But he even, uh, he cheated that in the uh, comics. He was still lived on. So. so this is a depiction of the Guardians of the Galaxy. This was before um, the movie had come out. I want to say this was like late 2000s here. Uh, so we see Star-Lord. Uh, where's Gamora at? Oh, she's over here. Three Drax, four Rocket Raccoon. See, Adam Warlock isn't in there yet, and neither is Quasar. So, but they're supposed to have Adam Warlock come on the scene at some point, but I don't know when it's going to happen. They did a hint at him in Guardians 2, if I remember correctly, at the post credit scene. But the, uh, the movie Guardians are considerably different than the comic ones, from what I understand. I haven't uh, read much of them, but... I know that's the main concern I've heard from loyal readers of the comics. Because most people who didn't really enjoyed those movies. So. And 
Yeah, within the Marvel Universe, they did have an Illuminati as well. So all these guys here, basically, they had, um, where they would meet secretly and discuss concerns within the Marvel Universe, and they've done things that would be considerably questionable to others. Um, Cap tried to be a part of them at one point, but he had a disagreement with them. Um, basically, they were trying to um, save this Earth by by destroying another Earth from colliding into it in orbit or something like that. And Cap didn't want to do that because, you know, life is still life to him. So they did something where they, like, mind-wiped him or something weird. I know that uh, Beast has been a part of this team as well. I think there's been a few others too, but really interesting that they did have a, uh, a secret organization. And then I know that um, they were responsible for sending the Hulk into space, which started the whole um, planet Hulk. And when he came back and was taking it out on everyone, because his ship exploded and killed the life he had created on another planet. So I know that they did do a, um, I did like this event though, the Infinity event. It was in this event that they, um, they showed like Thanos' other right-hand men or whatever you want to call them. Basically all the guys who are in the, um, Infinity War movie. And these were all, these weren't the regular covers, these were variant covers. So there's Proxima Midnight, A Corvus Clave, Ebony Maw, Super Giant, I think they gave her another name, and Black Dwarf. Yeah, this, this one wasn't too bad. I remember it was really high on the action. and It was interesting seeing these new characters helping Thanos and stuff. Yeah, and I guess in the comics currently, like, Iron Man isn't Tony Stark Iron Man, maybe? It's like a copy of Iron Man. So, I'm not 100% on that. But, I don't know. They do so many random things now, it's hard to keep track of some of it. So Juggernaut, uh, he's not actually a mutant if I remember. So like, here's what it says. Virtually invulnerable with superhuman strength and an impenetrable force field. His helmet protects him from psychic attack. I believe he found some sort of object that gave him the powers here. Either that or I'm just thinking of, oh yeah. In a cave, he found a large ruby, which magically transformed him into a human juggernaut. So, yeah, I remember in the cartoon, they dealt with some of that, if I remember. Now, Kang is a time-traveling uh, character, who I'm sure most of you know, but I think he is probably going to play a part in the next phase in the MCU since they did so much stuff with the timelines and stuff with Steve doing what he did and everything so he'll probably come along and try to undo something because basically he lives in a future where the Avengers are responsible some way for the horrible future that he is living in Trying to remember the exact 
I'll just read the top part. Born in an alternate timeline in 3000 AD, Nathaniel Richards, a descendant of Mr. Fantastic's father who bore the same name, discovered time travel technology that enabled him to journey virtually anywhere he liked in the time stream. So, let's see. I can't find the exact bit, but I believe what I've said is his motivation. Basically, his future is not too great. Like a pretty random character here. <laughs> Coffee. Oh, they're from Power Pack. That explains it. Power Pack was a, um, I believe it came out in the 80s and it was a series about like kids with superpowers. I can't remember if they were mutants either or what their story was, but uh, from what I remember, like, there's quite a following around it it's not like super huge but there's definitely people who really enjoy it but I've never read it before If I remember, this Lucifer character here is actually um, Magneto or something happened where he was revealed. He had like a beard underneath and he looked like Magneto or something. Let's see. Um, belonging to an a a to planet conquering arcane race, the alien Lucifer. Hmm, I guess not. But I could have sworn I saw something where he... He was Magneto or something. Ordered to obtain Earth for the Arcane, Lucifer was thwarted by a young Charles Xavier. Yeah, so that's strange, but yeah, I mean, you look at him, he looks pretty close in his character design without his helmet being open there. And he's got his little whatever you want to call it. I'm sure this is like a one-piece shirt type of thing, but weird. Yeah, I thought there was like a pack-in comic that came with the uh, X-Men Last Stand DVD, like the collector set or whatever that had him in there and it was Lucifer, but I don't know. Magneto here. I don't like how he's gone back to the weird white suit in the uh, Powers of Ten story. changed over time too. So in this picture it says flying tiger, cyclone, claw, man killer, and tiger shark. Yeah, the version I remember of them, um, Red Skull had gathered to take on Captain America uh, whenever he was on the island where he rescued or discovered like him and Sam Wilson Falcon together like it got off the island so but that's what I remember there was like a guy in a wheelchair and stuff I don't know <laughs> there's the image from the much hated 
uh, conclusion to the uh, one more day storyline. I'll tell you though, I enjoyed the art in it. The art was done by Joe Casada. And I know a lot of people hated the ending, but I liked how it was drawn at the very least, you know. But it's hard to say. Like, I felt Straczynski had a pretty good run on Spider-Man. I mean, that ending wasn't great. But I don't know if that was like a combination of like him sitting down with Dan Slott and them trying to figure out where do you want to go and the whole thing they pretty much hit a reset on Peter Parker with the brand new day thing and I remember at the time that was a big deal because Spider-Man was coming out weekly if I remember and they were just churning them out so I don't know what happened behind the scenes but I doubt that Straczynski wanted to end his run on Spider-Man in that way. But, you know, they, they've got to set things up for what comes next, you know. You know, a lot of people are hoping to see a Nova movie soon. But I think most people want to see the adult Nova, not the kid Nova that they keep um putting in the cartoons and everything like that. There's Onslaught here. Like, I know of the Onslaught event, but I didn't read it as a kid, so it kind of interests me. Some Tim Sale art here. early 90s Hulk. So I hope in the very least, yes, see here is power pack here. Let's just see a brief blurb. Professor James Power, father of Alex, Julie, Jack, and Katie invented an antimatter generator that siphoned energy from an alternate dimension. Al Fry Whitney Whitmain White Main, a member of the alien chameleon race, arrived on Earth to prevent the machine being used knowing it had the potential to wipe out entire planets. A rival species, the Snarks, attempted to steal the device. So I'm trying to just see a thing where it says powers or something. I don't see that though. But yeah, I know I'm not able to go into super detail on this video, but at the very least, I hope that uh, if you enjoy this, you're aware of the book, you can check it out and go into uh, greater detail on your own if you'd like. There's a lot of stuff here for sure. It's interesting they list him as Hank Pym here instead of Ant-Man. guess because he's done so much more than just be Ant-Man. I remember what a big deal the reveal of the Red Hulk was when it came out. Frank.
Mike Richards here. This is some stuff only I recently um, learned about him. Formerly possessed vast powers of telepathy and telekinesis, as well as the ability to fire psionic blasts, reshape reality, appear in astral form, and perceive future events. So, Franklin Richards is considered as one of like the most powerful characters in the, in the Marvel Universe. Really bizarre. And it's often said that a lot of elements of the Marvel Universe have happened or whatever you want to call it because of him. Like he basically imagined how the scenarios would play out or things like that. He's pretty much like a catch-all retcon if they need him to come in and reset things, I guess. But that's if they, he formally could, so I don't know if he still can or not. But I know that I've, I've heard quite a few times that he does possess all those abilities and stuff. Secret Evasion, this was another big deal. We found out a lot of the current heroes were actually scrolls. And the regular versions of those heroes were being held by them. are here. I mainly know them from the X-Men cartoon. It's a nice picture of the Silver Surfer there. Spider-Man. Yeah, this is some of the artwork here from that storyline I had mentioned. I remember there's a shot where he webs up Iron Man in there. And you just see webs everywhere all over the page. And he's tied up in the middle. But that was very well executed. And I, I've never read this um, miniseries that Tim Sale did. I think it was just called Spider-Man Blue. I don't even I didn't even know that was in color. I thought it was like in black and white or shades of blue or something like that. But I know that uh, if I remember, Tim Sale is actually colorblind, and he uses like a gray scaled thing of swatches to pick colors and then they print them in the non grayscale form of what those colors are at least I believe that's the case there. The 
here's another shot of the God Butcher. That's one of the, I think that's the, the cover for the last issue, like the climax battle. I could be wrong though, but that's what I remember anyway. Ultron. Venom. Uh, there we go. Vision. Vulture. So yeah, here's Adam Warlock. I don't know a lot about him. Let's see. So his power, his body can trap cosmic energy, which enhances his strength, endurance, and healing powers. Also uses this energy to reduce gravity, enabling him to fly. Projects energy blasts from his hands. So it says Adam Warlock was the genetic creation of a group of scientists known as the Enclave. He was the prototype for what they hoped would be an invincible army with which they planned to conquer the world. While forming in his cocoon, Warlock overheard his creator's plans. When he hatched, he rebelled against them, destroyed their base, and used his cosmic power to take off into space. Here's the best character ever here. The wizard. The wizard. The wizard possessed superhuman speed, which allowed him to run at several hundred miles per hour. His name is the wizard, and he's colored yellow. And it doesn't get much more uh, brilliant than that. Okay, our soldier. Really love how Steve Epting was Aorta, make him look so menacing. Wolverine. World War Hulk. I really enjoyed this storyline and Planet Hulk as well. X Factor, and this is showing the uh, the Peter David run on the book, which was really good too. I just like Peter David in general as a writer, and this is that Clayton Crane X Force storyline I was talking about. It's really good too. And there's our. Giant sized special X Men there. Claremont breathing a new life into the team. And this is one of the images from the um, Messiah complex or Messiah war. This thing was hunting down that brand new mutant baby and it was going to try to eat it. Messiah War. Young Avengers. I've heard a lot of good thing about Young Avengers, but I've never read it. have 
of the multiverse. Alright, well that's going to do it. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see. Check out the previous video, my mystery unboxing. I'm giving away one of those books to you all. Just got a comment on that video. Leave a link below. And we're going to do the drawing on that uh, the first Thursday in November. And it's a, it's a book that I did a little four-page short story in. So check that out. And uh, you all have a super slumber. Thanks.